Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. I hope that you're having a great start to your week. I have some really great new embroidery designs to share with you today that we just launched at sulky.com. They are really, really cute designs that you can use to embellish some gifts for the holidays. So I'm going to go over a quick and easy project that you can make, and you're going to want to create these for everyone on your gift list. They are, they come together really easily. You can make them in different sizes. You can showcase whatever design suits the gift recipient. Or of course, you can choose from our brand new cup of tea machine embroidery design collection. So this is the project I will be going over. It's a little felt basket. And this is one of the designs from the cup of tea collection. It says best teas forever. I know, super cute. So this is a great little catch-all felt box basket, if you will. And I'm gonna show you how it comes together and how these applique embroideries work in the hoop of your machine. Now, if you don't have an embroidery machine, you can also grab up this free pattern. It is free at sulky.com and you can create your own applique, do free motion stitching, do whatever you want to make your basket for people on your gift list. So before I get into that tutorial, as you know, there are, I believe, 18 days until Christmas. 18, is that right? So a little over two weeks to, uh, you know, get ourselves in order. I just dropped everything that was on my lap. And the reason it's on my lap is because I didn't want to forget to talk about it. Um, so since there are 18 days until Christmas, what does that mean? How many days do we have until New Year's Eve? So we need to add about six days to that. And as you all probably know, we are doing our 2021 New Year's Eve sew along on New Year's Eve day in the afternoon, starting at 12 p.m. noon Eastern time, we will be doing a four hour sew along event with Sally Tomato. We will be making this awesome Aurora bag. It has uh, faux leather accents and this really cool ice dyed print uh, for the outer fabric, strap options, tassels, high-end hardware. It's a really cool bag. And we will be starting at 12 noon Eastern time. If you cannot join us on New Year's Eve proper or during the day at that time, once the live event ends, you can watch at any time that's convenient for you. As long as you register for the event, you can then access all the videos, the pattern, the embroidery designs, everything that goes along with this event anytime after the live event ends. We'll be giving away tons of door prizes during the event. The grand prize is a brand new Foff sewing machine. So, Make sure you register because even if you can't attend, you are still eligible to win the great door prizes. I believe we have more than or just about $2,021 of prizes to win throughout the day. All right, kits are available at sallytomato.com for this. Um, there's a blue version that you're seeing on my screen right now. There's also a red version that's really pretty. And um, it did come to our attention over the weekend that they had sold out of the purple and blue kits, but they must have restocked because those are now available as well. And if your kit doesn't arrive in time, um, or if you don't purchase it until the day of the event, again, you can watch the video at any time and sew along with Jessica and I. So it's gonna be a really great time. I hope you all join. Last year when we did our New Year's Eve sew along, uh, we had sort of a roaring 20s theme. So we decorated in our flapper girl outfits and we had lots of fringe involved uh, because, you know, we were saying goodbye or hello to 2020. So this year we thought it would be fun to 
take it down a notch and make it super casual. So we're having a pajama party theme. So Jessica and I will be in our best looking pajamas. You come as you are, wear your pajamas, wear an evening gown if that's what you want to do. But I just wanted to show you all my brand new pajamas I will be wearing for the day of. And of course, I have to dress it up a little bit. So I will be wearing a robe because, you know, it gets kind of chilly down here in my studio and we have no idea what the weather is going to be like on New Year's Eve. So I thought I would be prepared with a robe and I'm going to add some machine embroidery embellishment to this really great plushy robe. So I'm going to show you in the next couple of so what's um, how I'm going to add embroidery and maybe you can follow suit as well and we can kind of be matchy matchy with our robes. So if you want to do that, grab up a plushy robe. They are everywhere right now as great Christmas gifts. So uh, be ready for that tutorial. I also got a knit robe in case that one is too hot because you know I have like four different lights on me and things of that nature during the sew along. And so I may need to start off with a knit robe or change into one, we shall see. So I thought I would get another option. Plus then if you all get a knit robe instead of a plush robe, you will know how to embroider that as well. So I'm thinking for this one, I will add the embroidery to the center back. And I found a really cool sort of sun and moon type embroidery that I'm going to try out on this. So again, I'll be going over that in the next couple of so what's so we can prepare for our attire on New Year's Eve. And I hope you will join me for that as well. All right, while you're signing up for the New Year's Eve event, don't forget to add the Lovely Llama webcast event to your library at sewingonline.sulky.com. This event is happening Monday. So in less than a week, we will be joined with Desiree Havoc of Desiree's Designs. And she's going to go over this really cute in the hoop llama design. And you can use that to create either this pillow that's super cute. Don't you love the pillow? Or you could turn that into a wall hanging as well. And we will be doing the same exact techniques, just a little bit different finishing instructions, whether you want to display this on your wall or create, um, use it as a focal point for a larger piece, a quilt, um, or even a tote, uh, or you can make that really cute pillow. So we will be learning lots of te techniques during this webcast. We will be working with puffy foam. Has anyone out there worked with puffy foam yet? Puffy foam is a really cool, just sheet of foam that is meant for machine embroidery. You position it over certain portions of your design before your machine stitches over it. And the foam kind of gives your thread this pop out effect. So it really makes the thread and the outlines of it and things like wording and special portions of the design just pop off of the fabric surface. And it's just a really, really cool technique. So if you've never worked with puffy foam, now is your chance to experiment with it and learn how to use it from an expert in the embroidery industry. So Desiree is going to go over the steps for when and how to position your puffy foam, how to tear it away, how to make it look really great with professional results. And what I'm showing you here is the kit that is available for the Lovely Llama webcast. The webcast is completely free to attend. This is the kit that goes along with it that includes all of those great fabrics that Desiree herself designed. It comes with white puffy foam as well as red puffy foam. It comes with soft and sheer, which you will build your in the hoop design onto. It comes with Solvi because it also comes with this great llama faux fur. So you'll be creating your llama in this really great textured fluffy faux fur and we will be embroidering on top of it as well. So you need to put that solvi over the top of the faux fur so that the faux fur doesn't get crushed and tangled and weird underneath your embroidery stitches. So Desiree is gonna show you how to do that as well. It also comes with six spools of sulky rayon thread. 
And if you want, you can also purchase the thread that comes with the design separately. Uh, you can also buy just the design separately. However, this kit is on sale for an insane price right now, and it will be on sale until Monday, the day of the event, or until we run out of them. So if you're interested in the kit for the Lovely Llama, I highly suggest you grab one before those are gone because Desiree's kits go really fast and her fabrics are limited edition. So once these kits are gone, sometimes we are not able to reorder those exact same llama themed fabrics. So just so you know, you got to get it while the getting's good and the price can't be beat, cannot be beat. All right. So those are the events we have coming up. And I really hope that you guys will join uh, for all the events. Yvonne says that llama is adorable. It certainly is. All right. Lots of you saying hello. I appreciate that. Okay. How much is the New Year's Eve class? So the event is $9.99. For that $9.99, you're getting four hours of sew along instruction from the pattern designer, Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato, and embroidery instruction from me. I will be teaching you how to create these freestanding patches, and they have little sewing themes to them. Sewaholic. This one says, I made this. This one says, sewing mends the soul. So you get this patch collection, which is valued at $9.99, absolutely free with your event registration. You also get the digital pattern for the Aurora bag, also valued at $9.99. So you pay $9.99 for the event. You get tw about $20 worth of product and a four hour sew along. So this is a really, really great deal. And I think you will find great, great value in this offering from Sulky and Sally Tomato. All right. A few of you haven't worked with Puffy Foam, received some in your mystery box. So now you will know how to use it and you'll have a really great project to try it on. So it's really, really a neat, neat effect you can create with stitches. All right, lots of you have the kit and have registered. Appreciate that so much. Okay. Oh, Denise says she's ordered some tea for Christmas. So I don't know if you all like to have, um, you know, I don't know if tea parties is the right way to, um, I guess it is. Do y'all have tea parties? My mom hosts a lot of tea parties. She likes to do traditional English tea. She puts out fine china, she makes homemade scones, she does lemon curd and clotted cream, and it's just a really fun kind of special, you know, alternative to, let's say, a dinner party. Um, she also does teas with my daughters. My son sometimes will join along as well. Um, and even if you don't do tea parties, you probably enjoy a cup of tea now and again. Or maybe you have a friend who really loves tea or prefers tea to coffee. Well, our brand new cup of tea machine embroidery uh, collection is called, well, cup of tea. And it includes six tea themed embroidery designs. They're all applique embroidery designs as well. So that's really fun. And they feature little sayings, filled with love, best teas forever, party, animal. Uh, they just make really great gifts, um, either for yourself or for people on your gift list. For the holidays, for Valentine's Day coming up, for Mother's Day, this is just a great sort of uh, uh, all-around embroidery collection that lots of people would enjoy. So I created this little catch-all pattern to showcase the best teas forever design, I thought that this little cute little basket would make such a cute gift basket. Fill it with some teas, maybe a little um, tea bag squeezer um, or some loose leaf teas, some accessories, some honey sticks, things like that. And then just wrap this up in some cellophane and you have a really great gift for 
your sewing friends, for your friends who like to drink tea, for teachers, for co-workers. So this is just a really great multi-purpose little catch-all. You can, you know, put your jewelry in it beside your bedside table. You could put your sewing supplies in it and put it next to your sewing machine. So it's really, really an all-purpose kind of gift. And it's gender neutral, right? You can create this out of some different colored fabrics to suit the recipient. And, you know, guys, gals, everyone's going to love this little catch-all pattern. So the pattern for the catch-all is absolutely free. Oh, here, here's the embroidery collection. Now you can see it. So we have best teas forever. Love you more on that cute little tea bag. Cute tea pie. Love that one. Filled with love. The heart says you are terrific. And then we have our party animal. So like I said, these are all applique designs. So portions of the design are created out of fabric. And I'm going to show you that a little bit in a little bit uh, so you can see what I mean. All right. So here is the cup of tea catch-all pattern. This is absolutely free at sulky.com. I linked to this free pattern in the description of today's post. So if you are not seeing all of the links that I put in the descriptions, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube today, you can click that little see more button and then the whole description will pop out and you can find links for the pattern, for the designs, uh, links to register for New Year's Eve, links to register for the Llama webcast, links to the Llama kit, Everything I'm talking about today is linked in the description there for you. So you can grab up your cup of tea catch-all pattern, and it's going to include the full instructions for how to assemble the catch-all. And it also includes two pages, which you need to print and tape together for your pattern piece. But before I get to that, here's that best teas forever design that I chose. You can choose any embroidery design you like. And the great thing about this is it's basically reversible. So you can choose, do you want the embroidery design peeking out on the inside of your catch-all? Or do you want it on the base? Or you could just switch it up. This is kind of how it comes together here. This is what it looks like when it's not snapped together. So you can simply switch it up, turn it around, and have a different color on the inside. So it simply snaps around, you tuck the little ends in, and smooth it out a little bit if you need, and now you have a different color and our design is on the bottom. But I, of course, want that design to be front and center and I think it's really cute that when the recipient takes their little goodies out, they get a little embroidery design surprise. You know, maybe you choose that love you more design and they take all of their tea out of it and they see that cute little design from you. And it's just a little cute little surprise uh, that's there for them. So, all right, let's get to the how to's. Um, but I also wanted to let you know that these are the threads that are featured in the Cup of Tea design collection. So all the designs use um, some or all of these thread colors. So if you want, you can purchase the Cup of Tea design collection on its own, or you can purchase just one or two designs individually, or you can purchase the thread palette for the Cup of Tea, and it will come with all six designs in three sizes. So great, great deal to grab up the thread and you're almost getting all the designs for free when you do it that way. So great idea to bundle those things together. So as you can see, 10 spools will come with the six cup of tea applique embroidery designs in three sizes. All right. So here's a prettier picture of my little cup of tea catch-all and I just kind of showed some accessories you can package up your catch-all with. First and foremost, we need to start off with the embroidery. Oh, Betsy, great idea. Betsy says this would be easy to mail in the flat position. 
Wonderful idea. You could stick this in one of those larger envelopes. I did want to mention the size of this. The finished size, once it is uh, snapped together, it's six by four and a half and it's about two inches deep. All right. So if you want to make a larger one, you can enlarge the pattern. I have not tried that, but I'm sure it would work. You could also make it a little bit smaller if you desire. So that's entirely up to you. Just make sure that your embroidery design is going to fit on the main part of your paper pattern. And I will get to the pattern in just a sec because first and foremost, we need to do the embroidery. But you want to make sure that you are choosing a design size that's going to fit once you fold those portions of the pattern, you can kind of, that's why mine is folded. So once you fold this, measure your rectangle so you make sure that your design's going to fit in there. Um, a tiny, tiny bit of my design got folded up into the side and that doesn't bother me a bit. I use the medium size design for this. I, it fit in a five by seven hoop. You could do a four by four, which is the small design size, and that will fit in the center. Okay, so what I used for this was Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer. We want some really great structure to our box. So I left this uh, Stiffy Stabilizer intact along my entire felt sheet so that it could then act as a interfacing when I'm assembling my box. So instead of using a cutaway stabilizer and cutting it away beyond my finished design, I kept the stabilizer intact. And I will show you that in a minute as well. So start off by hooping only your stabilizer because we are working with sheets of felt here we don't want to hoop those. Sometimes you can't even hoop them depending on the thickness of your felt. It just will not hoop secure enough. So we're going to do hoopless embroidery where we hoop only the stabilizer and then we stick our felt to it, okay? So regarding types of felt, I used a really pretty wool felt. You could also use a craft felt, but you do not want that craft felt that's super stiff. Okay, you want like the, the softer um, sheets of craft felt. And just make sure it's large enough for the size of catch all that you want to make. All right, so hoop your stiffy stabilizer. Then you're going to spray it with a little bit of the Sulky KK2000. This is our temporary spray adhesive. If you're worried about overspray on your hoop, you can create a little cardboard barrier and spray just inside of it, or you can spray the back of your felt and then position it onto your hooped stabilizer. And there you can see my felt is attached. It looks gray, but it's actually kind of a light turquoise color um, that I chose just based on the design that I and the thread colors I was going to use. Um, so choosing two different colors of felt is just kind of adds to the gift but you certainly could use two of the same color if you so desire. All right, so your applique design. Now, like I mentioned, you can choose any design that you like that is sized appropriately for the catch-all. Um, these designs in the Cup of Tea collection are applique designs. So you really want to open up your color sequence chart that comes with your design files so that you can follow along and know uh, the steps of your design because your machine's going to stop at certain places where you need to place your fabrics, where you need to trim your fabrics, and then it will tell you this is the step where uh, the machine is tacking down the fabric. That means the stitches are attaching your fabric to the fabric base. Then it will say stop and trim. You wanna make sure to use duckbill applique scissors when you are trimming your appliques. This allows you to get very, very close to those tack down stitches without snipping through them because you need to trim just that upper fabric layer 
after those tack down stitches are complete. Get really, really close to those stitches so that then the machine will sew the satin stitches to conceal all of those raw edges of your fabric. So here in this one, you can see I'm on the second portion of applique and you can see the little yellow satin stitches poking out. That's the bottom of this teacup here. So first you do that fabric applique, then you'll layer your second fabric over the top, over your placement stitches, then it will do your tack down stitches, then you will trim, then it will do those satin stitches. And you keep following suit with however many appliques are featured in your design. So this has four fabric appliques. We have the bottom of our teacup and the top, then the bottom of our teacup and the top. You can choose whatever fabric you want for this. I just chose solid fabrics so that the uh, designs within each teacup could be seen very well, but you could certainly go with um, sort of a minimal print if you want to do that. I went with fabrics that matched or closely coordinated with the thread for the appliques, but you could also go a different direction and choose a fabric that totally contrasts with the applique satin stitches. So as you can see, I went with a pink fabric for this towel example with the little teapot, which is so cute. And the uh, satin stitches are light green. So it's totally up to you, the fabrics that you wanna use for your applique portions of your designs, if you choose an applique design. All right, and there uh, we have that upper part of the applique uh, tacked down, and it's about to sew those satin stitches. All right. So really important to clip your jump threads with each thread change. It's so much easier to keep up with all of those threads in your design, especially when you're layering applique fabrics. You don't wanna layer a fabric over the top of some jump threads that either you forgot to trim or you just consciously didn't trim them. Because sometimes you can see through your fabrics and you'll be able to see those jump threads. And sometimes you can feel those jump threads as well. So very important to keep up with uh, trimming your jump threads on the right side of the work. Now, sometimes I will also trim on the wrong side. For this project, I did not because my base fabric is so heavyweight that those jump threads on the wrong side are not going to interfere with the hand or the feel of the basket. Um, I just used sulky bobbin thread for the bobbin in a uh, this design, you could also use the same thread you're using on the top in the bobbin. But just know if you do that, you might want to grab a couple of different thread palettes or some additional spools if you want to sew out the entire collection because you're just going to use more thread by also using it in the bobbin. All right, so. Once our design is complete, here is the finished cute design and it's just on our felt sheet. We haven't cut anything out yet. So completed design, super cute, absolutely love it. Now we're going to deal with our pattern. Now you may want to print out your pattern and tape it together before you do your embroidery and just have it at the ready and, and set it aside. Um, if you're choosing a design, you're not sure it's going to fit in that center, you know, folded guideline, definitely print this out and tape it together first and cut along the lines. I just had this step coming a little bit later because I wanted you to do your embroidery first and foremost. But in order to make sure that your design's going to fit in there, you may want to print out your pattern pieces and you only need the last two pieces of that pattern printed out. It's two pieces and it's very helpful to cut along that center line on one sheet only 
And that allows you to align that center line with the one on the second page and then tape them together so that they meet, okay? All right, so you will tape together your pattern pieces and then cut it out along the outer uh, dashed line. And you'll also notice that there is a line uh, between these areas. You simply just cut through that line. That is how we are going to have our little flanges so that we can fold our box and have our nice crisp corner. So you simply just cut down um, following the dotted lines on the pattern. Then you're going to cut out the pattern, centering your embroidery design where it needs to go, um, which again, it's a good idea to fold your pattern piece like this and use that as a guideline for centering your embroidery design. Then you can unfold it on your felt and cut out your piece. And that way you know that your design is nice and centered in the inside of the little catch-all box. So you'll need your inside piece as well as your outside piece that you are using for the box and leave that stabilizer intact. Like I mentioned, you want to make sure that your stabilizer piece is large enough for the entire catch-all pattern because it's also going to act as our interfacing once we construct the catch-all piece. All right, so we've left the stabilizer intact. However, we're going to trim away about a quarter to a half inch of stabilizer beyond that edge. Now the stabilizer is only attached to that embroidery piece. Since we're using Sulky Stiffy, it is weighty enough or heavy enough that it's going to give us enough stability for the box. You don't need to also add it to the other side, um, to the second catch-all pattern piece. So you want to trim it away just beyond the edges so that we're reducing bulk, but more importantly, when we sew this together, you're not going to see the stabilizer poking through because we are using raw edges here. That's the great thing about using felt is we don't have to finish the edges. So easy to construct, but we don't want a little layer of stabilizer poking out in between those layers. So we're going to trim away about a half inch of that stabilizer, again, leaving the rest intact. Okay, I am going to make sure we are keeping up with the questions here. Amy says, could the pattern be cut on the fold of the fabric? Um, you know, you probably can depending on the weight of your felt, but when I am working with a heavier fabric like this, especially one that's got sulky stiffy attached to it, I don't cut it on the fold because I just really want it to be as accurate as possible. And sometimes when you're folding a heavier fabric on when you're cutting on the fold using a heavier fabric, that fold will add just a little bit too much um, uh, area, if you will, to that finished pattern piece. Um, so you certainly could try it depending on the weight of your felt. My wool felt, um, I just cut it flat just to be on the safe side. Okay. Um, can you make it out of something other than felt? I'm allergic to wool, um, et cetera. Could I use foam and cotton? Um, now, you probably could, but again, we are working with raw edges here. So if you're using cotton um, that you've applied a foam interlining to, first off, you'll want to make sure that your foam interlining is trimmed so that, again, you don't see the edge of that. And if you don't mind that your cotton edge could fray over time, um, that's perfectly fine. Or you could simply satin stitch the entire thing 
to give it sort of a thread edge or a finished edge. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about that cotton thread fraying. Or you could choose another no fray fabric. This would be really cool in cork fabric, for example. Um, and cork fabric has a, a lot of structure to it already. And you can add embroidery to it as well. So cork fabric on the outside and inside, even adding the embroidery would work great for this as well. All right, Lynn says, or bind the edge if using cotton. That's another idea. However, when you get to this little cute little part, that might be a little challenging to bind that edge. Um, you could certainly spread it apart and add the binding, but I fear that it might, um, it might be a little bit difficult in this tiny little corner space to get your binding to look, um, you know, as nice and neat as you want it to, but you certainly could experiment with that. And I'm sure you all are such accomplished sewers that that is no big deal. Would you need the stiffy stabilizer with cork? Uh, you know, not necessarily, but I would try to use some kind of interfacing or maybe with the cork, you might want to use the um, sticky plus stabilizer. You can stick the cork to it for embroidery and then tear it away. And the cork probably has enough structure, especially if you're also using cork on the, the um, second piece, um, that it will stand up nice and proud for you. Um, so I haven't tested it, but I would think you could use a tearaway stabilizer for it um, and the cork would have enough structure on its own. Do you need a particular needle sewing wool felt? Great question. So for this, I used a 9014 top stitch needle. Um, that worked really great for me. A 9014 embroidery would also work with felt. Um, the reason I used 9014 is because um, that 40 weight rayon thread and the heavier fabric, the 9014 works great. I also used 30 weight cotton for the construction of the bag, for the sewing that goes around the edge of the catch-all. That 9014 needle is a must when you're using 30 weight thread. So I use the same needle for the embroidery that I used for the construction. I should say the same size needle because when my embroidery was complete, I switched out my needle just to make sure I had a nice sharp one to work with when I was moving forward with the construction. All right, this is a great idea. I had done a similar project with cotton and ran a satin stitch around, then used a Sharpie that matched the thread to cover whatever was missed. Great idea. All right, and yes, cork, um, a cork version would be great for a guy gift. You know, we're always looking for things we can sew for our guys. So this is a great thing they could put by their bedside table or maybe on a little tray when they come in from the house, put their keys and wallet in there um, and have a safe space that is just for them. And I'm sure you could find a great design or a monogram design would be really great too. Um, you could also maybe even try like a faux leather and create this out of faux leather. Um, I would definitely uh, have some stabilizer, some stiffy stabilizer with the faux leather. Um, but that would be really cute and a really sort of kind of masculine take on this project and really kind of lifting it up to like a, a luxe level, if you will. All right. Let's see. I want to make sure I am keeping up. How thick is the felt? That's a great question. Um, I will have to look that up and get back to you because I cannot recall the thickness of this particular felt. Um, but I will make sure to look that up. Where do we get a copy of the pattern? Is it included with the embroidery files? The pattern is actually separate and the pattern is absolutely free. The pattern for the catch-all is our free project for December and you will get these pattern pieces to tape together as well as instructions for how to construct the catch-all itself. 
It does not come with embroidery designs. You can choose whatever design you like, or you can grab up our cup of tea uh, machine embroidery collection, which I am featuring on the design or on the pattern today. It also comes with purchase of the cup of tea machine embroidery palette, which is our 10 spool collection of sulky rayon threads that coordinate with the design. So if you grab up the thread palette, it will come with all six designs in three sizes. All right, but the pattern totally free at sulky.com. You do need to add it to your cart um, and go through the checkout process, even though it's at zero dollars. So it will just say no payment is required for this. Um, and then it will go into your sulky.com account where you can retrieve it, download it, print it out, all of those good things. And it will also be stored there for the future. So if the time comes where you can't remember where you saved that on your computer, which happens to me all of the time, you can always go back into your sulky.com account, retrieve it again from your downloads area, print it out, and you're good to go. Are both sides of the box felt? Yes, that is what I did. All right. I think I'm caught up with the questions, but if I am not, feel free to add your question again into the live chat. You can also email us at info at sulky.com and we'll get to all of the questions. Yes, thank you, Betsy. Uh, you can also buy individual cup of tea embroidery patterns separately if you want. Um, so the embroidery designs are available for individual purchase or bundled as a collection or bundled with the thread palette. So there's three different ways you can purchase the designs that I'm featuring today. All right, so now we've trimmed up our stiffy stabilizer on our pattern piece and we're going to transfer the marks for our snaps. So with each piece, your front and back, you're going to have those right side up on your work surface and you'll transfer those snap marks. They go on the upper left and the lower right of your catch-all pattern. And then when you put them right sides or wrong sides together, you'll have a snap mark on opposite sides. Does that make sense? So make sure you transfer those marks and we're going to add the snaps before we put our pieces together. And that way, the back side of our snap is completely concealed um, within those felt layers. And snaps can go into cork, snaps can go into faux leather. So uh, make sure you are following the instructions from your snap box. The manufacturer will tell you, you know, based on what size snaps you purchase, um, and in the pattern, it tells you what size snaps I use, but this is a very forgiving pattern. So you can really use larger snaps or even a little bit smaller snaps and it will still work. Make sure you have some kind of snap setter. Sometimes the snaps that you purchase at your fabric store or your craft store won't come with a snap setter and sometimes they do. I have this kind of snap setter, which is so handy you just squeeze it together. One side of the snap is on one side, the other's on the other. You sandwich your fabric in between, and just like that, your snap is attached. Really super simple, but sometimes they also come with a little metal um, piece that fits over your snap, and then there's another little metal um, circular piece that goes on the other side of your fabric, and you have to kind of hammer your snap in place. You want to make sure that you have a very well protected surface because I have done all kinds of things to cutting mats and sewing tables that I would love to forget. So <laughs> that's why I have this kind of snap setter. Um, but by all means, you can use one that comes with your snaps or make sure that you grab one up when you get your snaps for the project. Um, or you know what? If you want to use buttons and buttonholes, um, if you want to simply put a hole in your felt and run a, a length of ribbon um, and kind of tie it in a bow, you can certainly do that as well. So you know what? Take this, make it your own. If you don't like snaps, but you like another type of um, closure, by all means, go with what you like. 
Um, Denise says, I've only used snow on, sew on snaps. Um, and would cam snaps work? Um, you know, I believe cam snaps, just the only difference between those is that they're plastic. Um, I am not super well versed on the cam snap front. The only way to know is to kind of do a test on a little bit of the felt fabric that you're going to use and make sure that they're strong enough that, you know, you can use them a lot. All right. So once your snaps are attached, now we're going to place our front and back wrong sides together. And in order to do that, I use a little bit more of the Sulky KK2000, this is the temporary spray adhesive just to make sure my edges are nice and matched up. And that way I don't need a thousand pins making sure that my layers stay together. I'm just gonna keep them together with the Sulky KK2000. And then this is an air soluble spray adhesive. So over the course of 24 to 48 hours, the spray is going to dissipate and there will be no trace of it in my little catch-all. It's really just there to keep the layers together while I'm sewing. So I spray, I put them wrong sides together, and then I also did add a couple of wonder clips just along my little pokey outy flange pieces. I don't really know what to call these, but the little legs and arms, okay? I just put some wonder clips along there just for security, just to make sure nothing was going to be out of place because along those snaps where you have your snaps attached, the KK isn't going to really, you know, keep those nice and sandwiched together. So just add just four little wonder clips or pins um, along where you have your snaps. Okay, so like I said, I am using Sulky 30 weight thread for this. And the reason I went with a little bit thicker thread is because I wanted it to be a little bit pronounced, um, like a top stitch detail. And that little bit heavier weight thread does that for me. If I had chosen, let's say a 50 weight cotton from Sulky, um, it would be fine for construction as far as durability goes, but I wouldn't really be able to see um, my thread. It would kind of just disappear into the background. So that choice is yours to make, but I really like using the 30 weight thread or a little bit thicker thread when I'm working with a little bit thicker fabric. So I went with 30 weight thread and I chose sort of a teal or aqua color to match this side of my box. And then in the bobbin, I chose a burgundy color that matched that felt color. And you could do it the opposite as well and show your teal color on the red and show your burgundy color on the teal. So that is your design choice to make, but all kinds of different ways of looking at, you know, how to personalize this and how to embellish it and how to really have fun with it and make it your own. So like I said, a 9014 needle for that 30 weight thread, and we are simply going to top stitch the entire thing. The whole thing, Thing. We're going to top stitch and when you get to those corners, you could see here, I just went down across that little corner, back up again, down across the other corner, back up again. All right. So when you get around those snaps, you may find it easier to attach a zipper foot to go around your snap area. I found that my standard sewing presser foot just went and just fit around the snap without colliding with it and causing my stitches to go wonky. So that's up to you if you wanna use a zipper foot or a narrow foot um, for this top stitching step, just to make sure you can negotiate around the snaps. Um, you may find that helpful to you. All right, and just like that, it's finished and all you need to do is snap it together. So cute, so easy. So you will just fold up this little area, fold it upwards, and then wrap your snaps around, snap them shut, and then just kind of 
Use your finger to make sure that your corners are nice. And all of a sudden, you have a little felt box that stands up on its own. So I wanted to show you here is the finished little box with the cute design peeking out. And then here you can see kind of the depth of the box. So it's about two inches deep. And I just absolutely love how cute it is, how simple it is. This is really a super simple project that comes together in no time. You could teach um, a child how to sew using this because really they just need to sew that outer edge. And if you want, you can even, even um, change your seam allowance. Instead of top stitching, you can come in a little ways and go about a quarter inch from the edge just so, you know, if you're teaching someone or working with a younger sewing student, um, then they can kind of line up the edge with their presser foot and have a little bit easier time doing that top stitching. As long as your stiffy stabilizer is trimmed a half inch from the edge, you have that wiggle room of where to position your stitches. Just as long as that stiffy stabilizer isn't going to show in between those layers. And you can always trim that a little bit closer to the stitching when you are finished. So really, really cute idea. Great for holiday gift giving. You can even create this a little bit larger. Make sure you're getting felt by the yard instead of felt sheets if you want to make this a little bit larger because the pattern itself is slightly larger than, uh, let's say, a sheet of craft felt if you were buying craft felt for this. You would need to um, uh, reduce your pattern ever so slightly to fit it along a traditional craft sheet um, or felt sheet. Um, so look for felt by the yard if you want to make a larger one and enlarge the pattern piece. And you could put your cookies in here and gift them to neighbors and find a really cute, you know, I mean, even the tea designs work great for that as well. Uh, for a little cookie platter or fill it with scones or something. Um, so as I was showing you earlier, I also did a cute little towel. These are towel blanks that we have at sulky.com. This one is trimmed in pink. We also have them trimmed in black, white, um, green, lots of different colors. Gold, I think we also have. Um, so I just did the cute little teapot um, on this towel. And you could gift this up with a cute little mug and some great, you know, uh, winter type teas, gingerbread teas, peppermint teas, um, and those little honey sticks make cute little gift baskets um, and things to give away. I also stitched out the cutie pie design, which is so cute. Um, I will have to make this into something and share it with you guys at a later date. But here I just chose kind of a goldish fabric for my pie crust. Um, so that's all applique. And then the cup itself is a fabric applique. And then it just has these cute little flower um, threads on it. Cutie pie. Love it. So there are lots of things you can do with this brand new collection. And, you know, if you're making these for friends, you can choose a different design from the collection and make six that coordinate, yet they're all different. So that's what I love about grabbing up a, an embroidery collection, especially with the thread palette, because then you have all 10 threads that you need for all six designs at the ready, and you can just kind of assembly line style these and really bang these out before uh, the holidays and give these away. And they make great ideas for Valentine's as well. Teacher gifts I mentioned, super, super cute to fill with some cute, uh, you know, Hershey's Kisses and things like that. So I know it may be too early for some of you that I'm even talking about Valentine's Day, but you know it's going to be here before we know it. And I definitely want you to join us for the lovely llama. You can create a pillow or a wall hanging with the same design collection same techniques used. Make sure to grab up your kit while supplies last. They are going really fast. And like I mentioned, these kits feature Desiree Havoc's um, special fabric line. And 
they go fast. Once they're gone, they're gone. So be sure to grab that up. Um, I want to close today with showing you a video from Desiree. She is inviting all of you to the webcast on Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Again, if you can't attend live, be sure to register. You will get a free Valentine-themed embroidery design from Sulky as a thank you for registering that you can start using right away. And you will also get access to the event on demand. So you can watch it anytime after the live event ends. So here is a message from Desiree. And then I will be right back with you to answer any last minute questions that we have. Hi, it's Desiree with Desiree's Designs, and I am so excited to be partnering up with Selkie again and doing another webinar for you guys. We are really excited about our brand new fabric line that's releasing, and we've put together this special pillow wall hanging project for this webinar that we're gonna be showing you how to put together super easy, super fast, and that these are great gifts for those special people in your lives. You're gonna be learning a lot in this webinar. You're gonna be learning how to use some foam to put under lettering or initials or anything that you wanna give some dimension to and make stand out more. It's just a really fun extra thing you can add to your project. We're also gonna be using, talking about how to make these fun little tassels that can be added on, sewn on to any project. We're gonna put them on the ends of our pillow here. Um, we're gonna be showing you how to make those and those are really fun and fast and you guys I think are gonna love it. Uh, we're gonna be talking about putting toppers over faux fur. I love to use faux fur in projects. Anytime I give my grandkids a project that has any kind of faux fur, they just love it. So this is just a really fun project that incorporates a lot of different techniques that are really, really doable and easy for you on your embroidery machine and the tassels you just make with your thread. This is with the Sulky 12 weight thread. We love it. So I hope to see you there at our special webinar with Sulky in December. Okay, bye-bye. She is just so cute. I love Desiree. I did forget to mention about the tassels. So Desiree is also gonna teach you how to create your own tassels using heavyweight Sulky thread. So these make great little embellishments for your wall hanging or your llama pillow or tons of things. You can make these into earrings. You can make these into little charms. So really, really great education that you will get during that free webcast this coming Monday. So I hope you will all join me for that. And if you haven't already, I hope you will register for the 2021 New Year's Eve Sew Along with Sulky and Sally Tomato. Only a couple diff uh, weeks until Christmas and then, you know, another about a week until New Year's Eve. So be sure and register, add that to your library at Sewing Online, and I hope to see you all there. So Betsy is saying, this cup of tea embroidery collection is my most favorite so far. Just when I think Sulky could not get any cuter, they did. You are so sweet. I can't wait to see what you create with it. You know, if you all are using our great designs, we have our Santa Sayings design collection that we launched. Um, so, so cute. I've done a ton of projects using that for the holidays. Now we have our cup of tea design collection. There's lots of great collections and thread palettes at sulky.com. It makes it so easy when they package the thread up with the designs and you don't have to go hunting for just the right color that you need uh, to create the designs that you're seeing. So it makes it really convenient and you get it at a great deal when you purchase it that way. All right. So when you purchase, can it be replayed later? Yes. So if you cannot join us for New Year's Eve for our four hour sew along, or if you can only join for a portion of that time, you can go back after the live event ends and see the entire video, pause, fast forward, rewind, all of those good things um, and watch it at your leisure. Um, that is true for any of our webcasts, video casts or special events. So if you're busy on Monday, but you have time on Tuesday, all you have to do is make sure and register. That way it goes in your library and you have access to it after the live event ends. All right, and you will always have access to the freebies, um, the presentation materials, 
anything associated with that event will be stored on one event page in your library. So if you haven't joined us over at sewingonline.sulky.com, create an account, start adding stuff to your library. We have all of our legacy webinars, all of our events, anything we've done in the past is available there and you can add them to your library at any time. So that site is different from sulky.com where you purchase all of your products and get your great designs and patterns and things like that. So our education site, two different websites, two different login experiences, um, just to let you know. But very, very worth it to create your accounts. You can bookmark them so you can go back to them later um, and join us at any time during our live events or on demand. All right. Love that you can go back and you can pause when doing a project. That's right. You know, especially for New Year's Eve, you know, last year we started our New Year's Eve event at 8 p.m. Eastern time and we ended at midnight. And a number of you said it, it was too late. Even if it was New Year's Eve, you couldn't be sewing. Um, and some of us were having cocktails. You know, let's be real. So <laughs> this year, that's why we decided to start at noon so that more people could join us live. Um, and so along with us. But like I said, if you don't get your kit until the day of, um, if you decide to get a second kit because you have to have both colorways, whatever the case may be, you can always go back to the video as long as you've registered, watch any part that you need further clarification on. Um, like I said, pause, fast forward, rewind, all of that good stuff. Uh, so we are here for you always at sulky.com. Again, if I missed your uh, question, oh, Kathy is saying, can Velcro be used for closing, for closing the catch-all? I don't see why not. Just put a little Velcro dot in place of the snap. Um, according to the pattern, where those little dots need to go, make sure you have the male and female portions in the right areas when you are placing your snaps, um, excuse me, your, your Velcro dots and just kind of sew them in place. Even if you get the sticky dots, um, add a little bit of sewing around there because they really don't last long, those um, sticky ones, or just buy the adhesive Velcro. You certainly don't have to get Velcro dots. You can use a square or rectangle of, of Velcro. Um, just put it in place according to the pattern and you'll be good to go. All right, how do I order the Sally Tomato Kit? So the kits for New Year's Eve are being fulfilled by sallytomato.com. So if you go to sallytomato.com, just search for Aurora, or you can also search for New Year's Eve, and you will find the Aurora kits in two colorways. If you register for the Sew Along, or you go on to our link that I put in the description of today's post, that also contains links that go directly to the Sally Tomato kits. So you'll be able to navigate there really easily. All right. So thank you all for joining me today. Thank you, Vicki. Appreciate it. Love that you can do the projects later when you have time. That's perfect. I hope you all make these for your friends and family on your gift list and even get ahead and make some for Valentine's Day gifts coming up um, because they're just so cute. And I would love to see what you do with your cup of tea machine embroidery collection. So if you upload photos of your creations to social media, be sure to tag Sulky. Um, and you can also add the hashtag so better with Sulky. And that way we can find you and we can see what you are working on. We absolutely love to see what you create and how you make these projects your own because that's what it's all about. That's how we learn from each other. That's how we take our sewing to the next level and have fun with this community. So thank you very much again for joining me today. I will see you next week for the Lovely Llama webcast on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then I will see you Tuesday right back here for another So What. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great week. And I will see you on Monday.